Howdy, so I thought I would do a, a new video on stacking. So I'm here at one of my favourite sites, uh, Ledston Lock. Uh, just seen some of my subjects fly away, hopefully they'll be back in a second. Um, and I'm going to try and do some handheld stacks of horseflies. Um, so I'm feeling a bit brave photographing horseflies with just a uh, just left off of these. these. All the ones I've seen so far are males and they don't bite you. So I'm going to be using my uh, Canon 5D Mark IV. Uh, Canon MPE 65 lens and I'm going to try and do some handheld stacks of the horseflies if they come back um, and basically as you can see it's really windy today so that's why I'm focusing on fence fences because the, um, the fences don't move in the wind uh, it's also really bright sunlight as well so I've taped a little bit of diffusion paper above the lens um, and hopefully that will allow it to uh, just sort of diffuse that light a little bit so it's not too harsh on the subjects so um, clip I'm just going to show you the subjects themselves so there's one horse fly oh the other one just flew uh, so they're pretty active uh, but yeah I'll have a go at stacking this guy now right let's see if we can stack they're really active these flies they keep moving from one side to the other so I'm gonna to have to move quite quickly uh, I'm gonna go up to about three times magnification right so I've got the subject in view So basically all I did there um, was when I was looking through the viewfinder I adjusted the uh, the shutter speed because I saw it was going to be overexposed. So I went to 160th of a second, uh, f7.1 and ISO 1600. Uh, one has just landed here again. I'm just going to fire a blank. Um, right. Change position. So this one's going to be side on. Is a little bit overexposed with the background. You can live with that. Fire a blank. So, just going to go to f8. 160th is enough shutter speed. Um, change it to um, 200th of a second. Fire a blank. He moved. Cool. Oh, started moving again and now he's gone back head on. So let's just have another crack at that. I won't need to fire a blank this time. Um, Basically, what I'm doing now is just checking that the images look sharp, which they do. So, fire a blank, one last go. I'm going to go higher magnification. Ah, it's gone. So, that's why I do it handheld. If I was trying to use a tripod there, uh, by the time I put the tripod in place, uh, the flies would have just disappeared. And now I can see no horse flies. Wait, that's one was on me. Ah, great. <laughs> Cheers. So welcome to the uh, second part of the video. So what I've got here is I've got all of the images that I took out uh, while I was outside photographing the horse flies. So you've got the uh, the first one, sort of a horse fly on its side on profile. Um, and then here's the second one where the, um, uh, the horse fly was head on. Um, so on and so on. I think I took about five different stacks. Um, I'm gonna just pick on uh, this one. So let's see, we'll go from there. So there is, well, if I look at the whole thing, uh, there was 27 images. Um, 
this was the final output. Um, so this is the one that I have I have stacked. So as we go through these images, you'll see uh, different parts of the fly are in focus as I've moved towards the fly, which you uh, saw when I was doing the handheld stacking on the first bit. So I'm just going to show you how I do the stack. So I have edited these um, uh, these images a little bit. So that's what they were like when they first um, were imported into Lightroom, and I've just sort of uh, copied and pasted the settings from one across all of the ones in the uh, in the real layer. So if I just go back to there, and that's so I've just you know just a few little edits that I've done to it. So I am just going to take three of these images and show you how I do the stack. If I did it on all of those images, it's going to take a little bit too long. So all I do is I highlight the images down here in the um, in the show reel. And then I press Control and click, almost like a right mouse click, and then edit in, open layers in Photoshop. So what this is going to do now is it's going to take those three images and it's going to open them up as um, individual layers in Photoshop, hopefully. Um, it does take a little while to do this. So here we go. So it's automatically switched over to Photoshop now. And... If you look here in the bottom right, um, these are our layers. So it's, it's got two in, so it's put the three in. So there we are. So let me just make that a little bit bigger. So here we've got the three separate layers. And I'm going to highlight all three layers. Um, and then simply, all we do is go to Edit, Auto Align. And then on this auto align panel here, we just want to have auto um, selected and then hit OK. And what that's going to do now is it's going to, if you imagine you put like three photographs of a horse fly on top of each other, it's just perfectly lined them up. And that's what it's done there. And that's why you've got these little bits of space here. Um, this can be an indicator as to whether your stack is going to work or not work. Because um, if, if there's too much, if there's been too much movement as you move towards a subject, it can mean sometimes the stack isn't going to work very well. So to do the second bit again, I go back to edit, um, and then auto blend. Um, now normally by default, panorama will be selected, and we want to make sure stack images is selected, and then we also want to make sure that seamless tones and colours is is checked here, and then click OK. And then basically what Photoshop is going to do is it's going to create these things called layer masks in between the images. And, and it's basically just going to it's going to get rid of all the bits which are out of focus and just leave the bits which are most fo most in focus. So that's on the, the final bit. So down here now you can see the layer masks that it's done. And, and it's basically just taken, like I said, taken the bits which are most in focus and allowed those to be visible through these masks. Um, final bit now is you just... Flatten the image, voila, and that's the stack done. So you've got slightly more depth of field there than you do um, on looking at each of those layers individually. So this has now just become one layer. Um, and you would just shut that down. Now, I'm not going to save this because it, it's not as uh, a bigger stack as what I've already done. So I'm just going to click done. So, oh, that's my dog barking. <coughs> Ursel, please stop. So, if I was to go back to the uh, the stacked version, jump. There's a stacked version, and as you can see, that has got a much bigger depth of field. So, if I go to there, unstacked, and there's the stack. There's the uh, the head on horsefly, and it's literally as simple as that. Um, it, it's really not a complex exercise at all. So, I, I, one thing just to mention, I did do a little bit more. So. That was what came out of Photoshop. I have done a tiny little bit more editing, so I've, I've got that. I've just sort of darkened it a little bit, added more contrast, etc. Uh, but that is the final horse fly. I think um, I did process one of the others out of here as well. Yeah, so there was one of the uh, side-on ones, just did exactly the same. Um, there's one of the individual images. You can see just sort of little bits of the hairs in focus here. The front of the eyes completely out of focus. Um, but if I go to the stacked version, there it is, much bigger depth of field all the way through the image. And it's really as simple as that. So the actual, you know, doing the um, 
The handheld stacking is really simple out in the field. It just requires practice. And then doing the stacking here is, uh, is, is really simple as well. So, well, I hope that was useful and happy stacking.